the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed a rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth dear brethren the things pertaining to this church age how great and how vast and how important they are we the believers being termed out as aleke niketesus new spiritual species unto christ given equal privilege and equal opportunity in rightly dividing the word of the lord so that we can orient ourselves as we take the priority through the mentor ministry of lord god the holy spirit in understanding his word and applying and telling to this people that we have something to be associated with this angelic conflict and why are we here being kept alive in this angelic conflict and what is the reason that lord has made us to be alive in this world even after salvation and orient ourselves to the true thinking in the knowledge of christ so that we can make our thinking to be 100% accurate from the original languages of the scriptures from a right pastor teacher who is going to inculcate to you this word rather than following the cheapest gimmicks and tricks of the pastors that are being practiced today in the pulpits that they have power to heal that they have power to do miracle that they have power to have the edification directly when they speak in tongues rather than all these things thinking that you can really support the lord but rather you are really blaspheming the character of my christ satan thought that it could be like the supreme one like but it is not the supreme one the only supreme one is our lord and savior jesus christ jehovah elohim but satan thought i will be like the supreme one the pains always duplicating the doctrine of demons duplicating the doctrine of tongues now after the completion of canon in the work of destruction of the temple in ad 70 i am talking about ad 0070 after the ascension of our lord and savior jesus christ being sat at sat at the right hand of lord god the father what is the purpose now of the tongues tongues have been ceased they are no longer tongues The problem is that the people will start with 1 Corinthians 12 and the conclusion passage you will find in 1 Corinthians 14:2 never they read the entire passage never they read the true way of edification is the knowledge of bible doctrine they just go through half languages and half tongues and they want to tell with half knowledge that the tongues are still in existence but never you will know that it is duplicating exact pattern of christ The tongues was a bona fide gift from AD 30 to AD 70 to make them to realize the importance of evangelism to the Jews. But after AD 70, no longer tongues because the temple has been destroyed, and there is no need for the Jews to be told about Messiah. But Satan continued. We have the table which we participate in the Lord's Supper. Satan has its own table which has been given to the demons as the idols as the point of their sacrifices. Satan is always a duplicator 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 what our lord originated it wants to do the same pattern what we can find in the difference between the seven years and the 1000 years as well the 1000 years of rule of our christ satan wants to duplicate it by those seven years of trial the tribulation satan by itself is not omnipotent omnipresent omniscient it is not sovereign neither it's righteous so that we can think that we can help satan by neglecting exegesis we can think we can do great things as a past teacher sitting in the pulpit neglecting the true importance of bible doctrine and trying to support satan by making people to believe in good works teaching them good deeds making them to practice xyz trends for personal counseling visiting whichever is most essential that to be neglected and what is not essential to be inculcated that's what satan does satan always wears a cunning mask 
a cunning mask not, not to show forth to you the reality of that satha. And that is what many of the pastors have become a prey. Exchanging the glory of Lord for a lie. Exchanging the glory of Lord for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley. Worrying about the softness of this world. Satan thought it could be like the Supreme God. Like. But it can never be. The closer it can come to be alike. That's why the God of this world is Satan. And you know what Satan does? Obscures you from the truth. Obscures you from the reality of the word. Alludes the believer not to learn Bible doctrine. But what did our Lord say? Our Lord said, I am going to give you the doctrine and the doctrine shall set you free. And even to be like the Most High God or the Supreme One, Satan is not straight in its thought. If it were to be like the Supreme God, Satan would have also inculcated the truth. But it is a total anti antipathy. It is not to the reality of the truth. It is against the truth. And that's what Satan plans, dear brethren. It cannot organize its own world. How can it can organize the thinking of Christ? And there are supporters in this world to support because false teachers being many in the pulpits to support Satan by not teaching exegesis in the pulpits. To support Satan by practicing organic and inorganic methods of science. And since this is devil's world, Satan being the father of lies, it will never tell you the truth. The truth of the doctrine, what you can learn from the original language of the scriptures through proper exegesis and accurate exegesis, it can never cause you to realize the importance of the word. So that the learned doctrine which you have learned, the number one thing what Satan does, it neutralizes it. And it has a counterfeit doctrine, the doctrine of demons. And it wants to replace that in your soul and make you to walk a pattern, a pattern where the religion walks. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a relationship with Lord God the Father through His only begotten Son on the cross that whosoever believes in Him shall never perish but have an everlasting life. That's what Christianity is. But religion is what you need to work out your own salvation by depending upon your own good works. That's what the religion does. That's what the religion teaches. And Satan wants for you to follow the trends of religion, not the trends of relationship in Christ. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the truth. On the contrary, Satan, which it instigated its own self, the revolt against the Lord, because of the pride in its heart, is the father of lives of this world. It cunningly deceived Eve, telling to the point, you will be like the Most High God, or you will be like God. No, sorry, not Most High God, like God. And that's a lie. So right from the beginning, Satan entered through this world to make sin to the people by lie. And that's where you and I have to understand, if there is no truth to be properly exegeted by the pastor teacher, then that's a lie. And why is exegesis so much essential through isagogical, categorical explanation of the word, through the proper dispensing of dispensations? Because you should not perish, you should not lose your escrow blessings for time as well as for eternity. And you should come back and put number one priority for the maximum glorification of Christ, because our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has magnified his word above his name. That's why. The word attempts for you to doubt. He would have told, no, my Jesus Christ has told me not to eat the truth. But rather, he was tempted to look what was in God. That is what it is alluring so many people to fall into this various trends of fairly cults, including human sacrifices. And why it is happening in a day-by-day -day process? Because the truth is not been inculcated to your soul. 
John 8, 32, the spiritual freedom where many people fail. You shall know the doctrine and the doctrine shall set you free. That's it. Your freedom will come by learning Bible doctrine. And it is a duty of a pastor teacher to warn you out to get back and learn the word of the Lord as never before. And his work is to inculcate through proper ice teaching, which is isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation of the word, through the proper dispensing technique of dispensations, so that in this bona fide gift given to him, in this unique dispensation of the church age, every believer being thumbed out as Allah, he has to learn the word of the Lord and in return what he has learned from the mentor ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit through proper diligent study or through his spiritual father who is not there but the first pastor teacher who trained him up he has to come and inculcate and imitate the teachings of Apostle Paul and teach them to the reality of reaching for maximum glorification of Christ that's how simple it is his belly will not be God, but his belly will be Bible doctrine. His glory will not be in shame, but his glory will be in the glory of Lord God Almighty to the maximum glorification of Christ. His role will not be to mind the earthly things as to teach some morality standards and neutralize the doctrine of Christ. But rather, his mind will be occupied to teach the heavenly things because he is a citizen of heaven. And he will teach you the doctrine of Christ by thoroughly inculcating through proper exegesis. So that where we are in this mystery doctrine of the church age, the unique spiritual life. But what does Satan will come and tell? I will be like the Most High. I will be like the Supreme One. The Hebrew tells, I shall be. That means it is still a process. It thinks it shall be, but it cannot. But in the KJV it says, I will be, which is wrong. That means definitely I will be. But in the process of the original Hebrew it says, I shall be, shall, shall, which may or may not. But the conclusion is always the truth. It will never. And that is what many people fail to realize in the churches today. It wants to be like God. It wants to be to transform into the angel of light. It wants to show forth what exactly it thinks. But everything is fakery. It is not metamorphomai. It is metaschematizoa. And that metaschematizoa meant to say it doesn't have the true change in its, in, it, in its intrinsic nature. It doesn't have true application from its inner mind. It takes something which doesn't go with alignment of Bible doctrine. Outward appearance and outward transformation, which is not true. And that is what you and I have to learn, dear brethren. The believer has been called for metamorphomai, the true inner change. But Satan is not metamorphomai, it is metaschematizoa, which meant to say not from inward, but it is appearing only from the outward, and from the outward only, which is not a true characteristic of it. It wants to take it and keep that I am a true characteristic, like wearing that hypocritical mask. And that is what it will prove for you. When you stand at the judgment seat of Christ, if you neglect the true exegesis of Bible doctrine, if you neglect the true isagogics of Bible doctrine, if you neglect the true categorization of Bible doctrine through the proper dispensing technique of dispensations in learning the word, you will lose it. You will definitely lose it. You will lose the valuable time. You will lose the valuable energy. You will lose the valuable assets used in vain, vain, vain. Therefore, dear brethren, you should know your enemy. You should use and ask the Lord to direct you for the right doctrine so that you are here being placed to the realization of the truth. You are not here to be placed to be in a, some sort of a fictionized or delusions. But rather you are here to tell to this world what are you in Christ, the hope of glory and the doctrine that you have believed in the knowledge of the word. When you have been taught properly by the right pastor teacher. That is what the true duty of a believer is. And if you think you know better than us, it's great. You think better than us, without exegesis you can explain. And Lord help you at the judgment seat of Christ. Because we know they are self-arrogant people who do not change to exegesis. 
I am not answerable to God. You will be in return because I have done my duty in giving you this tape. And in fact, even I have a lot more to inculcate again. If you are not able to correct yourself by listening to this tape, then I don't mind, I don't worry. But I have done my work. My duty is to crank it out. And the hearers are left to the Lord to whom this information has to go. But I need to faithfully do it. I'll rip it down to the line. So that they can come back for exegesis. So that they can come back for isagogics. So that they can come back for categorization. Satan thinks, I shall be like, and it can never be like. And it can never come representing to you that he is the most high in this world. It began to this human intervention through a lie, deceiving Eve. How do you think it can give you the truth? That's why our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in the Gospel of John 8, he told, He is a father of lies. He is a murderer from the beginning. He is not only a father of lies, but rather he is the first one who instigated the murder plan through Cain to kill Abel, so that the promising seed should not come through Abel, because the believing fact is always chosen. It is not only a liar, but it is also a murderer from the beginning, saith our Lord. And what else do you think that Satan can be like the Most High, like the Supreme One? No way, no chance at all. What is our Lord? Our Lord is truth in wisdom. Our Lord is holy, holy, holy. With our Lord walks truth and righteousness. And the truth and righteousness recorded for us and kept in the Bible is exegesis. John 1.18 Because our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ exemplified to the point and told, No man has seen God at any time, but it is me who has come, will expound it to you. Expound is exegesis there in the original Greek. Exegesis, exegesis, exegesis. And when you come back to Ephesians 3.2, Apostle Paul tells, when you read what I have written for you, you will come to know the mystery doctrine because of the grace that has been given to you in this dispensation. That's where the term comes. Iconomas. And people will tell dispensation. Okay, he's a dispensationalist. If you tell that, Apostle Paul was also a dispensationalist. Dispensation is what? The divine outline of history, of mankind on this earth, so that you can learn from history something which you can orient from the ensamples of the failures of this mankind which has been created right from Adam till to the last one in Malachi. And then we can learn some of the things in the hypostatic union, and we can learn some of the things from the historical trends of Revelation 1, 2, and 3, and we can orient ourselves to this mystery doctrine, and we can know the enlightenment ministry of Ladgad, the Holy Spirit, not the endowment ministry as it was in the Old Testament time, and we can know what are our polytheism of privileges. Maybe this word, polytheism, are used only once in the New Testament and in the Second Maccabeans. The Second Maccabeans not to be compared of. The citizenship, that's what they care. The polytheism of privileges for the church age, which we have noted back in the previous tape for ten times. The mystery doctrine, the protocol plan, the invisible power, the portfolio of invisible assets, the indwelling trinity, the completed canon, the baptism of Ladgad, the Holy Spirit, and being termed out for you a positional truth, a positional confirmation for you that you have been superior then to the chief fallen angel known as Satan. And experientially you need to grow up to attain that. And you become an invisible hero. Maybe this polytheism of privileges cannot be duplicated by Satan. That's why Satan doesn't have its counterfeit doctrine for you to neutralize in these things. Therefore, Satan thought it could better for you all not to know about this doctrine and allure you from the word and obscure you from the truth and cause you to follow the rituals, rituals, rituals without reality, rituals without exegesis. And that's why the people who come to the pulpit without having the bona fide gift will never emphasize for you about this polytema in the pulpits. Or about the use of Aya, the godliness, the true spiritual life. Therefore, dear brethren, if you truly love my Lord, desire for the truth in exegesis. 
desire for the truth in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. And if you do not, Lord help you the other way, which you think you can learn. But when we all appear at the judgment seat of Christ, as it is based upon the imputed righteousness that you have been given, this eternal life, to have this escrow blessings in time or in eternity, or to have your rewards after your death that you have built your house upon gold, silver, and precious stones, it has to be purely upon the knowledge of Bible doctrine learned under the right mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through the rebound in the privacy of your priesthood. Lord judges you according to his truth. According to his truth alone, Lord deals with you, and according to his truth is nothing but the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Therefore, dear brethren, ponder over these things as we shall continue in the next tape. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge our in Lord. Father, we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.